The Proverbs of Solomon A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is a grief to his mother. My name's Arthur, thank you for joining me as we meditate on the scriptures, focusing our attention on Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is a grief to his mother. Parents are often proud of their children and like to boast of their achievements and talk about what they've done. That is, if their children aren't an embarrassment to them. Then they might blame themselves. What have I done wrong that my son or daughter has gone astray? It's easy to talk about someone who is successful, but a son or a daughter who is not successful or who goes the wrong way causes grief to the family. And the book of Proverbs is written as the writings of a father to his son, that the son may gain wisdom. For the father, through the experiences of his life, has gained wisdom, and he wants to pass that on to his children, that they also might have good success. So the first observation that we can make from this proverb is the fact that just because a parent is good doesn't mean that the children are going to turn out good. Each of us is an individual and each of us makes our own decisions in life. We are trained up by our parents and they have a good influence or a bad influence on us. But in the end, it is our own choices that make a difference. My mind turns to the story of Samuel. Samuel's father, Elkanah, had two wives. One was Hannah and the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Elkanah and the family were godly, and Elkanah loved both his wives. It was a real embarrassment and grief to Hannah that she bore no children, and it was aggravated by her rival, Penina, who mocked her for not producing children. So Hannah brought her concern to the Lord. She was weeping about this in the presence of the Lord. Eli saw her. He thought she was drunk. But she said, No, I am grief-stricken. And Eli said, May the Lord grant your petition. She had made the promise to the Lord that if the Lord gave her a son, she would give him to the Lord. And so, in the course of time, she bore Samuel. And subsequently the Lord gave her other children. But when Samuel was weaned, she brought him to Eli. And he was brought up as a priest in the temple of God. And became a very great leader in Israel. And one can imagine the joy that Hannah had seeing her son become so successful. In the course of time, Samuel married and had children himself. They were brought up I guess in the same circumstances that Samuel had been brought up in the temple. But they took a completely different line. They followed the way of Eli's sons, indulging themselves in a privileged lifestyle. One of the roles Samuel had was as chief justice for the land. And as he grew old, he appointed his sons to also be judges. But it turned out that they took bribes and were not honest judges. And so the people were not happy with them as judges and they appealed to Samuel to appoint them a king to rule over them rather than to appoint his sons as judges. One can imagine Samuel's grief seeing the way his sons turned out. And it wasn't for lack of a godly father as an example. One of the requirements of a leader in Israel was that they fear God so that they do not take bribes. But these men had no fear of God. They favoured their friends and took bribes. And so the people said, We have no complaint with Samuel, but we reject Samuel's sons as judges over us. Give us a king. Well, of course, that doesn't really solve the problem. A king can be righteous or unrighteous just as easily as anybody else. Establishing a royal family simply means that the king is the son of the previous king. Samuel's mother would rejoice in her son, but Samuel himself was grieved by his sons. 
Even indeed as Eli had been grieved with his sons, but he had not disciplined them, and the Lord had judged them. But it was in God's plan that a king should be appointed in Israel. And after a false start with Saul, Samuel anointed David as king. And David was given the promise that he would always have a son to reign after him. So this was a hereditary dynasty that began with David and went through to the Lord Jesus. For the opening verses of the New Testament give us the genealogy of Jesus with respect to the title King of the Jews. And so Jesus inherits the title King of the Jews through his legal father Joseph. Matthew records the wise men coming and saying, Where is he born King of the Jews? And in his discussion with Pilate before he was condemned to death, he says he was born King of the Jews. He's not taking this title because it is not his. It is his by birthright. That is the basis on which he claims to be the Messiah. He was born King of the Jews. Now our proverb was, a wise son makes a glad father. We find that John particularly emphasises Jesus is called the Son of God. And on several occasions, and Jesus regularly called God his father which the Jews interpreted as saying, making himself equal with God, of the same substance as God. They repudiated him because of that. Nevertheless, Jesus persisted in calling God his Father, and he taught us to call God our Father, which art in heaven. On several occasions, the Father called out from heaven, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So here we have Jesus being the wise son, making his father glad. There were two particular occasions on which this was said. The first one was at his baptism. And so this was looking at his life up until the commencement of his public ministry. As he had grown up, as he had studied, as he had worked as a builder, as he had managed the affairs of the family after Joseph the former heir to the title King of the Jews, had passed away. And so we have the Lord commending Jesus in his life as a citizen of the society. And then we have on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Father speaking again to the disciples, that this is my beloved Son, listen to him. And again commending Jesus to the disciples. This is at the end of his public ministry as he's preparing for the final stage where he will lay down his life for the sins of the whole world. So the father was pleased with the Lord Jesus as his son and from Jesus' perspective he says he always did those things that pleased the father. That is evident in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a glorious day that was when the Son returned to the Father. And we're told that he is now seated on the throne with the Father as an advocate for us, pleading for us when Satan would accuse us before the Father and trying to make life difficult for us, the Son argues for us on our behalf because he knows our frame, he knows that we are dust, he knows our circumstances and he knows our heart. And his role there is not necessarily to take away problems that we might face, but to always provide a way through them, so that we may not be destroyed, but rather built up through the experiences of life. And so, this section of the Proverbs of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1, begins with, A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. And we must choose whether to obey our mother and our father. And of course, our Heavenly Father instructs us to do that. For that is the way of blessing. Or to be foolish, to reject the wisdom of our father and mother and to go our own way, the way of death.